So we're talking about overlay and raster. And in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to do overlay and raster just because um, every raster data set has, uh, has pixels. And these pixels are really just um, values on the ground. And the pixels have a grain, so this is an actual number of meters or feet by meters or feet. And every value is just representing a, an actual physical space on the ground. And in an ideal world, you can line all of your rasters up so that they are one-to-one. -one. Every pixel relates to another pixel. So there are two types of overlay I want to go through, but let's just start with a simple example. Let's pretend this is a road. And this road is a Boolean raster. And this Boolean raster means that the zero says, nope, this is not a road. And one says, yep, this is a road. And let's also say that we have a landscape um, raster. This landscape is a uh, land cover raster. It's nominal, meaning uh, these numbers don't represent quantities. They represent names. The two, let's say, is a river. Um, the threes are representing forest cover, you know, and so on. This could be fields and crops in the city or something, or impervious surface. And our mini analysis in this kind of overgeneralized model would be let's see where um, what types of pixels um, land cover pixels is our road going to pass through maybe I'm planning and I, I want to know how many miles of road are going to go through forest how many miles of road are going to go through field that kind of thing so in a product raster I want only the information where it's both a road and land cover. So I want to see only the land cover that's, that um, the road kind of intersects. Um, well, the command here isn't intersect like it is in, um, in the vector data model, but it is in kind of an and statement, which means that we're looking for this and that, only where both are true. So the arithmetic way of doing that, I'm hoping you're kind of starting to see, would be that if we multiply these two rasters, we're going to get kind of an interesting product. So let's try to do that. If I multiply them, I end up with this type of thing, right? If I look up here and I'm like, okay, so I just multiplied them and I got this, which is looks like what I want. It looks like the road um, and the land cover raster are being represented here. But what does it really mean? Um, 1 times 5 is 5, right? Okay, let's check another one out. 0 times 3 is 0, and so on. You can kind of see how, okay, the river is coming down through here. The only place that the river is represented on this final raster is where that river intersects the true value in my road boolean raster. So multiplication is kind of a is a fun one because um, the 1 acts as... Uh, as you know it says are you here and then the return value says well yeah one times anything is itself so I am here and the zero kind of blotches out anything that you don't want so multiplying with boolean rasters is kind of like doing an and statement but it isn't always as simple as that um, sometimes we want to not just know uh, yes or no uh, what is you know what are the spots that are true in both locations but we might want to actually know what is the best spot out of all of these locations and so that type of overlay is a little different let's just say that we have um, this piece of criteria right here we got criterion 1, criterion 2, and criterion 3 and in this case they're all binary rasters so let's just pretend for instance that we've uh, reclassified a, a land cover raster and these are all grass or cropland or something but we, we we deem it good for building you know it's not a marsh it's not the woods criterion two perhaps this is well this is the parcel that I own or the parcel that I can purchase in criterion three perhaps this is a reclassified slope raster where um, one represents all of the places that have buildable slope it's not too steep right so all these criteria we could say um, well I could just look at them all independently and say well yeah it looks like between all of these somewhere in the middle is going to be the best spot but if this was a huge region and you had 20 other pieces of criteria 
it's going to be more difficult, more and more difficult for you to just look at all the pieces individually. So that's why kind of scoring these rasters, um, either as binaries like that or ordinal rasters, can make it a lot easier to, to kind of find the, the optimal suitability more quickly. And what I'll say is that here we've used just binary. Zero is bad, one is good. You could very easily translate these all to kind of ordinal rasters. And what I mean by that is you're, you're scoring them. You know, you might score zero is bad, five is okay, ten is really good um, on a ten point scale, or maybe zero to a hundred. And um, the problem is it's, it, it's extremely subjective. So anytime you score something, it's really good to have a reason you did that, right? Point is, um, this is in this simple example, we're just going to use binaries because that's uh, easy to understand at first. In this case, I would just add these together because I don't want to multiply them. I'm interested not just in all of the places they intersect, but I want to know where do they intersect the most? Uh, where do they intersect the most often? And in order to do that, I'm going to add them together. So hit say add, and then if I add them, I'm going to get this kind of pretty looking thing down here where it says, aha, they actually combine in different ways. And it looks like there's one spot that's probably really great because it's flat, I own it, and it's on um, you know easy building ground. So two ways of doing overlay and raster. I uh, hope that's useful. There are other ways to do it as well, and we'll get to those uh, down the line.